Don't tell you about living in the Philippines. I wish I knew this before I went. Hopefully it'll help you in your preparations before you go to the Philippines or if you're considering it because there is a few things that could take you by surprise, even could be a little shocking or cause some problems for you. It's the bad things and the good things that I discovered that hopefully help you in your journey. All right, let's go. Number one, joint pain vanishes. For some reason, Philippines makes you younger. I don't know why this is, but all my joint pain disappeared. I don't know if it's because I was in these warm oceans that were felt like warm baths. Sometimes the oceans were quite hot. People are generally much, much happier there. Everywhere you go, people are happy. So the happiness level is higher. Your stress level is down. You just feel good. The warm weather feels good. And I just noticed that all the pain just seems to disappear. Manila. Manila's traffic is, let's say, colorful. It's not just about going from point A to point B. It's about a bit of a game, a colorful chaos of vehicles embracing and going around each other. So that's all I have to say about that. The traffic is challenging. And um, if you can avoid it, just avoid it. Karaoke nights are everywhere, every night, and 8 a.m., 9 a.m., you will hear karaoke. People blasting their karaoke at 9 a.m. in the morning. I actually lived on the beach for a couple months and there was a karaoke just down the road from me, probably a good five minute walk, and I would hear them at 10 in the morning, nine in the morning, and I like to sleep in in the morning sometimes. So if you are sensitive to noise, make sure you don't live near any karaoke. Malls and guns. This one took me by surprise. Malls are a place where a lot of social hubs, families gather, there's friends meet, and there's large community conversions, and there's a lot of guns, which I mean is there's any mall you go to that's protected by um, security guards, they have, I've seen shotguns, I've seen handguns, they check your bags, and it's kind of a weird feeling at first because I'm not used to that. First, it makes you feel uncomfortable because you're like, well, how dangerous is this city that you need armed guards everywhere at every store? In a way, it's even safer than, I would say, the United States uh, where you got all these crazy shootings going on. I felt perfectly safe walking down the street and I was in some uh, really remote places and hardcore. I was the only white guy in um, a sea of Filipino cities and people and some areas were might have been uh, a little sketchy but no one gave me any trouble and I was fine. So chicken fights are a thing of Filipinos. This is like in their DNA, Filipino DNA. It's in their culture. They absolutely love chicken fights and of course most North Americans are a little appalled when they hear or see it. I had to go at least see the fight to see what it was all about and see what the hype is. They're very fast. They only last about 20 or 30 seconds. It's two chickens with little um, razors on their ankles. Basically, um, chickens fight quite aggressively and um, it's hard to watch um, if you're not used to it. And there is gambling on it and there's a big community environment there. This is part of their heritage and their DNA and it goes back. It's actually an ancient sport. A lot of honor about it and I think the, um, the chicken that gets killed actually gets eaten and it's a big honor to have their chicken fight in the fights. So if you have a weak stomach, then you might want to skip it. Okay, phone service. Phone service is hit and miss. Sometimes it can be really good and sometimes it can be really not so good. Uh, the more remote islands you get to, the harder it is going to have to have service. And of course, closer to big cities, you're going to be fine. But even in the big cities, I had a couple problems right in Manila. My first few days, I, my service kept failing. I'm not sure, really sure why. I didn't verify it properly or something, but I was actually stuck in Manila. I was lost and I had no GPS and I had no way to even call a joyride to get me back to my where I was living. So it was, it was a bit of a disaster, but it all worked out. But it can be um, a little stressful. So make sure that before you leave the airport that your phone is working r properly and the internet is working, the Wi-Fi is working on your phone. Make sure your mobile data is working super well before you leave the airport. Once I went from Manila to smaller islands like Sargao, the phone service basically didn't work very well at all. I usually would rely on WhatsApp to chat with people. Filipino time isn't just a stereotype, it's a real way of life there. It's arriving fashionably late, isn't frowned upon, but expected, and being punctual. It's just a thing there, so it takes a little while to get used to that. So expect people not to show up on time. You'll start to relax more after being like in a hustle bustle 
of like say United States or Canada or the UK, Australia, you come to the Philippines, you'll start to just mellow out and relax a lot more. This, this leads to my next one. You'll probably be much happier in the Philippines than in North America, or United States or UK. Uh, I think UK is rated as the most unhappy place in the world to live now, or it's up there, it's up there. Most people in the Philippines are naturally just quite happy. You'll feel happier, you'll feel better, you'll mellow out. You just feel good living in the Philippines. Anyways, I did, I just felt I was really happy there. All your stress just melts away and you just feel good all the time. I don't know what it is. It's something about the country that just makes you feel good. Urban legends and superstition add mystery. So there is some urban legends and superstitions that, well, they're superstitions for North Americans or Canadians or Americans, but if you live in the country and you're a native to the country, then they wouldn't probably be superstitions. They'd be more like, mm, I don't know, just like part of their history, part of their way of life. There's, um, there was a cup. There was one story where somewhere in Pacifico, it was said that if you took pictures of the landscape, um, that you know bad things might happen um, down the road if you take pictures of that certain area on the beaches in the Pacific. Okay, typhoon season just isn't a date on the calendar. It is real, and those typhoons are scary. If you're there, it's uh, it can be pretty crazy. I lived on the actual right on the beach in a tent under a gazebo for a month and it wasn't even typhoon season and that rain comes in hard and the storm can get quite unsettling. There's thunderstorms, there's lightning and it's actually at first a little unsettling. There was parts of where I was living in Pacifico that typhoon destroyed hundreds of thousands of uh, people's property and homes. There was actually a big rebuilding effort when I was there which leads me to my next thing is the hospitality of the Filipinos knows no bounds, no limitation to how far they'll go to help you um, when you need help and they help each other. I can't believe how much the Filipinos will help each other when in time of need. So whether it's rebuilding for a disaster or helping up a community cleanup or it's just the backbone of the Filipinos and they help each other so much and you don't see that in North America, everyone's like fending for their self here in the United States and Canada. It's just like, it's a self, kind of a selfish way of life here in North America, I have to say. But in the Philippines, it's different. Everybody helps everybody to make sure that everybody moves along and gets the, gets the support they need in a, in a much deeper way. There's a much deeper sense of community there, I found, among the locals. Mastering the art of haggling. It's a skill honed in on everyday transactions whether you're negotiating for taxis or striking deals, no matter what you're doing, mastering the art of haggling is a rite of passage for residents and you will need to learn this skill. There's over 7,000 islands to discover in the Philippines and there's a, just a treasure trove of natural beauty waiting to be explored. From landscapes of Batanes to pristine beaches of Palawan, each island is unique and it's just incredible each one you go to is different. Once you get to know the locals, you could actually even start asking around, you know, is there some remote islands I could go to and just hang out for a while? I had one friend who was there in the island and uh, she went and lived in some remote island that wasn't even inhabited. All she had was the spearfish. She's from Australia and she just chilled out on the beach for a week and she caught her fish and slept on the beach and cooked her food on the beach and uh, she managed to do just fine. It's, it's possible to just go and chill out on uninhabited islands in the Philippines. It's crazy uh, cool, but you gotta know maybe a few survival skills if you're gonna try that. High-speed internet is available in like big city hubs like Manila, but if you get out in the remote areas, the internet can be sketch. But Starlink is getting installed in certain places like where I was, I was on a place called Pacifico and it's a very remote part of Sargao Island and the internet was always traditionally really bad there but when I arrived they just installed Starlink and I actually didn't have any problems with internet I was able to work remotely being able to work remotely is uh, gonna bring in a lot of new people there and there's gonna be a thriving community there very soon in fact it has already started that leads to my next thing there is thriving expat and digital nomad communities in the Philippines, it's a become a digital hotspot because it just offers so much value. You have surfing, you have snorkeling, you have diving, you have 
these crazy um, sites, you have crazy scenery, you got beautiful beaches, you got warm weather, you got low cost of living. Like there's so many upsides to living in the Philippines that people are just naturally drawn to the Philippines. It's getting to be basically like Bali. This is one negative thing that I have to talk about. Um, I got hurt in the Philippines and I broke the collarbone in a scooter accident. So it can be a real unpleasant uh, experience if you don't have good health care. So one, make sure you have super good health care insurance before you go. I would at least have $10,000 saved up if you're going to live in the Philippines in case there is an emergency and you need to pay for health care. I had to pay for a private hospital, which was $4,000. It covered the, the hospital stay and the surgery and all the expenses. It got a little scary because I actually wasn't able to leave the hospital because I wasn't able to pay my bill. Um, at first, I actually um, wanted to leave the hospital and stay somewhere else, and they wouldn't let me until I paid. They have armed guards at the gate, and um, there's no way of leaving. So in a way, it almost turned into a prison in, uh, in some ways than a hospital until I paid my bill. Uh, I even thought about just running out of the hospital and leaving. That's how scary it got just for a day or two. Like I was, it crossed my mind. I'm like maybe I should just run away. Maybe I should just escape. Like I was thinking that, but I had a broken collarbone and I wouldn't have got very far. You can't really hop walls with a broken arm. Um, I called my sister and says, look, I need some money for, uh, I need to borrow some money to pay for the hospital bill. It was, it was um, double what I thought it would be. I had $2,000, but it ended up being $4,000. So I didn't have enough. And she um, was saying, well, why don't you just go to the Canadian embassy? I'm like, Canadian embassy? I can't even get out of the hospital. It was really, really weird and really scary. I ended up, it all worked out. I ended up borrowing some more money from another family member and I paid it off. It was all good down the road and insurance came and paid for everything down the road two months later. But at the time you had to pay up front. So, um, you know, that's, that's one thing to be aware of if you're going to be traveling, you should at least have five to $10,000 saved up uh, in case something happens and you should have insurance. And the hospital, the surgery itself wasn't very good. It actually being, it was a, the surgery was a failure and it's, it was still broken after I had the surgery. Uh, the only reason I knew that is three weeks later, I went back to Canada because I was still in a lot of pain and um, they said it was broken still. So I had to have the surgery again in Canada to get it fixed properly. The, the pin was, had shifted and it was a real disaster and the surgery was a mess. So I don't know if the doctor didn't know what he was doing or if he was just a bad doctor. And, and, and also some Filipinos warned me that some doctors will, if they see foreigners with money, they will actually try to get you to come back more and more often than you need to. Uh, they were warning me that there is, that does happen. So I know that I talk, say a lot of amazing things about the Philippines, but it's the one thing that, um, I kind of left a bad taste in my mouth is the healthcare there. You don't want to get hurt. So if you, the other thing is getting medication, certain medications are hard to get. So that's going to be another issue if you're going to live there long periods of time. So the only way to get around that is to bring like a long supply, like bring six months worth of medication. If you make sure you can get it in, in the Philippines. And if you can't make sure that you can get it. And another big thing that surprised me was visas, how easy it is to get visa extensions it's it's so easy you just pay 50 bucks 100 bucks extend your visa right there there's places all over um, the philippines you can renew your visa i was in sargao and there was um, a place that was there three days a week i could just go and extend my visa and you can live up to the philippines up to five years um, just keep extending and it's so easy there's a lot of countries that don't let you do that and there's a lot of headache like in bali for example bali was a huge process to extend your visa like it's just not a quick drop in drop your visa and pay a fee you have to usually make two or three visits and it's you have to book an online appointment and it's it's a real pain in the ass in bali to extend your visa and you have to leave after six months but here in philippines you can stay as long as you want so that was really cool and i wish i knew that because i probably would have planned to stay longer another thing that really surprised me at the philippines is you'll want to stay longer you'll want to stay longer whatever you have planned when it's time to go home, you'll want to stay longer. So just plan 
uh, to have extra backup, extra funds or extra income coming in in case you decide you want to stay because there's just so much to explore and you'll have so much fun and you just get into this a lifestyle of surfing and having fun that you might want to just stick around for a while. And a lot of people end up extending their visa. So that will take you by surprise as well. And don't be surprised if you're a lot happier in the Philippines than where you are now because it's just, you just, I don't know what it is, but it's just magical and you feel good all the time. The sun is shining, the beautiful beaches, you get surfing, it's warm weather, the people are all friendly and happy. And who knows, you might even meet a couple nice Filipino gals or guys. I've seen both Filipino guys and girls dating uh, both. Um, I've seen a lot of North American women dating Filipino guys, uh, which took me by surprise. So it works both ways. This is not old guys picking up young Filipino girls. It, I've also seen a lot of young um, North American girls uh, meeting Filipino guys. So uh, anyways, that took me by surprise too. So hopefully that helps you on your plans. That Hopefully that helps you when deciding if you should go to the Philippines and just a heads up and now you're more prepared when you go. So hopefully that helps and I'll see you in the next video.